welcome to Riverside Church. Thank you so much for joining us. My name's Chloe. And I'm Chris. Good morning. Welcome, Chris. Why, thank you. It's your first <laughs> time here in the studio, so give Chris some love. Say hello and um, welcome him. Oh, Chris, thank you very much. Do you want to tell everyone who you are, what you do, what you do at Riverside? Yeah, yeah. So I've um, been coming to Riverside now for about four years and um, serve on a, a couple of the teams here, including the missions team. Yeah, So right. um, we're trying, to, the global missions team that is, so we try and uh, engage with missionaries and missionary yeah. partners around the world. Yeah, it's, it's exciting Brilliant. stuff. Brilliant. good. Great. Yeah. Well, it's exciting to have you here in the studio, so we hope you enjoy your morning. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> You're like, uh, thank you. you might never do it again, so you've got to give him lots of love so that he does it again, okay? <laughs> um, cool, so we're just going to chat. Do you want to tell everyone a little bit about what you were up to over Christmas? So something particular. Oh, over Christmas. Right. So. Um, uh, one thing that happened over Christmas was that uh, Jackie's family all decided throughout earlier in the year to get together over Christmas time and actually do something creative. So share oh, share creative cool. things they'd done over yeah. the over the over the year. That's good. And uh, so they rented a hall in East Budley and they, and they wow. got all got all of their um, uh, paintings, right? And yeah. Cro needle stitch, all that sort of thing, and photographs. Oh. Uh, that they're taken through the year and, and so display cool. them for people to see. And it was really good. It was really oh, good to see creativity. Really cool. Sometimes it's quite yeah, hidden, yeah, yeah, it? definitely. So yeah, that was really people good. in her family all created stuff, and then they they put it in the hall. And then members of the public could come in. It wasn't just no, it was just it was just family. It was just for the family to see. <laughs> she got quite a big family then. Yeah, yeah, right. Okay. Yeah. I was going to say if that was my family, it'd be me and my three, my, my sister and my two cousins, just with like paintings. Like yeah. <laughs> it would be nice. So that's really cool. Yeah, and Jackie's sister and family even uh, brought a couple of ukuleles and did a song as well. So that <laughs> <laughs> That's was, really random. It was brilliant. Actually, it was really, really good. good. It was really so, good. can I ask what the best piece was? Ah, or do you have to say Jackie's? Well, no, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> Jackie's dad is quite good at painting, actually. Oh, he did cool. quite a lot of painting, so that that was yeah, that yeah? was really that impressive. Yeah, that's really cool. Yeah. So they all really creative then. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And did you bring anything? I did some photos. Yeah. Oh, so oh, I, I, I really love photography. So oh, I, I did some um, because I work for a marine contractor, civil engineering contractor. I thought I'll do something about the sea, oh, so I tried to cool. do some uh, slow motion shots of the waves crashing and things like That's that. That's really and, uh, cool. Yeah, kind, of, kind, of, kind of worked. Did you, did, you haven't brought them this morning. Oh yet. no, <laughs> no, not suitable for public consumption. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say the next step is to like um, scuba dive and like take yeah. photos of fish. Oh, <laughs> like, the water. Uh, that yeah, well, you can do that. Yeah. <laughs> do you think they'll do it again? Then is this going to be like an annual thing? Or uh, I'd like to think yeah, so. It's really yeah, good, actually. Yeah. yeah. Is yeah. this the first year they've done it then? Yes. Yeah. So it was like kind of lockdown. Like thing to do type thing. Yeah, yeah, it's really good just to get together. You know, Aww. see people we haven't seen for quite yeah, a long time. Yeah. So, yeah, it's oh, really that's good. really cool. And did they, they all travel from far? Are they all quite local? Yeah, from from uh, Hampshire. Wow. Um, and from Cornwall. That's up really cool. So, yeah. so it was like a big event in the. It was in the Lord family. 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 Yeah. The Moore family. Yeah, Jackie's yeah, side. Yeah, yeah. yeah so yeah, the Moore family side. event. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah, really good. cool. Oh, so that's like a nice Christmas like thing to do over the holidays isn't it, it like really like good. a purpose to get together isn't it because like sometimes at christmas you see your family but then you're like what are we going to do now you know so it's nice to have like a purpose thing yeah. to do so how about you um yeah well i think uh christmas feels like a really long time ago so i'll talk about my yesterday what i did yesterday um so for those of you who don't know i um, me and josh who's preaching this morning are getting married in march and um, you have to like do like a, we don't have to, but we're going to do like a, a gift list that you send out to people um, of things Very that you would good. like. Yeah, so right. um, we found like a little website where you can put stuff on, but then you've actually got to go out and look for the things. <laughs> so I spent maybe like four or five hours yesterday in Dunelm and the range, literally going through every department like this, 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 this. <laughs> and, um, and I was on my own. So um, me and Josh discussed it at great length. So we felt it would be better for our relationship if I went alone and then made the decisions and then brought them back to him and was like well, what do you think because um i mean i love him lots but he doesn't really have much of an attention span anyway let alone for shopping and like when we go shopping it's just he's just like i'm bored and like i was like getting really passionate in the shops about the ironing boards and i was like oh we get this one we get this one passionate about ironing yeah boards. well i want a good one <laughs> <laughs> i want one i want one that's not too heavy i want one that's not too flimsy I want one that you do the stand thing like that. Do you know what I'm talking about? So it's about? like a Goldilocks thing, yeah. It's not yeah. too warm, not yeah, too, yeah, not too yeah, cold. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> exactly. Just, just right. Yeah, but but I'm like that about absolutely everything at the shop. <laughs> so I'm like the bath mats. I was like, oh, that's too thin. That's too thick. But I like this one. This one's got a nice pattern. So I was glad that I went alone for that. Um, for that. I can understand side. that. Because <laughs> then now I've got all these photos of everything that. Um, we would like not just me we 
<laughs> Although a lot of it is stuff that I really want. Um, so who gets the final vote? That's the thing. Yeah, he does. Yeah, but I think, oh, okay. I think, I think. Well, I think. Well, it's both. It's a joint decision, isn't it? It's a joint decision it's about what we want. Yeah. But also, I don't. I thought some of stuff I don't think he cares about. So. <laughs> So, but I didn't know that they did. I was looking at draining boards. This is really sad. Um, this is what my life's come to. And they've got a single layered draining boards, but then they've got double layered ones. That's pretty cool, isn't it? Do like a double decker bus. Like a bus, yeah, yeah like yeah. a bus. <laughs> but for your draining, but like, so you drain your stuff. I thought, I want one of them. So, yeah. We don't currently have anywhere to live, but at least we've got all the stuff that we need. Yeah, so, so. You, you can get out a good garage and turn yeah. in the meantime. Come yeah. on. I said to Aaron and Rachel, I was like, are you happy for all this stuff to get sent to your house? And they were like, uh, uh, yeah, and I was like, the biggest thing will be an ironing board. It's fine, it's fine. So, um, yeah, storage is currently at Josh's parents' garage, but um, yeah, so that's good. good. Yeah. Very do you good. like doing home improvement stuff, or are you? Uh, I, I, I do like doing DIY. DIY. Yeah. So the, the physical, you know, the making stuff, mm, and, and like yeah. um, uh, cupboards and stuff like that. Oh, really? put, put in, not making the cupboards. Not making cupboards. Cupboard. Yeah. The yeah, IKEA. That, yeah, yeah. But making it look good, that is all Jackie. I, ah, you know, she's okay. got she's got a really quite good eye on that. That's cool. I, I have no sense whatsoever. Do you think I should have brought Jackie then on my, <laughs> on my trip yesterday? Maybe, maybe that's what I should have done. <laughs> oh yeah. I mean, I think a lot of stuff's not going to match. I was like, this is pretty. This is pretty. But um, yeah, no. That oh, maybe I should. Maybe when we get somewhere to level, invite her around and she can. Um, yeah. Does she enjoy doing it, or would she? Yeah, she does. She does. Yeah. yeah. She, she, yeah. Yeah, and she, she likes making things just look just nice, homely, but, yeah, but yeah. You know, presentable. Yeah, 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 yeah that's good. true. Whereas yeah. for me, it would just be, well, that's good enough. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> that's not good enough because it has to be perfect. That is pretty good, actually. Yeah, I'm excited about like, um, like finding like stuff that's mine. Do you know what I mean? Like, I was looking at the mugs. Um, but I've got loads and loads of mugs at home. Like, I've okay. got millions, so I don't think Josh would let me have any more mugs. So, how many um, can you use at once? What do you mean? One. How many can you one, yeah, just, one. Just, just <laughs> I was one. like, what do you mean? <laughs> well, and like, Josh's family, like, Aaron and Rachel would drink a lot of tea, and Josh has gone through a bit of a stage where he's saying that they have to use the same mug all day okay. for their tea, which I think is really good because otherwise, comes the end of the day when we do the dishes and we've got hundreds of mugs, but it's just his mum and dad drinking. You'd need so your double decker you, training board. Well, they've you? got one of them, so <laughs> yeah, that's why they got it because they drank so much tea. But now we've gone to one mug a day, maybe that's what we should just have two mugs. That's it. Oh, there one you for go. me, one for Josh. There you go. And, then, and people, when people <laughs> come round as well, you know, you've got to cater they to them. They can drink bring it out. Yeah, bring it on one. <laughs> yeah, that's what it would end up being like. Yeah. 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 So um, there was a lot of stuff. There was lots of stuff that we're we're getting. And the other thing you said that you've been up to this weekend, you watched a movie. Yes. Yes. So we watched. Um, uh, an old one yesterday. Ooh. We watched the, the Hunt for an October. I don't even know it. Mm, never heard but that. Quite, quite an old movie now, but um, it was really good. And we, uh, I've seen it a few times before, and it That's never good. gets old. Oh, it's so I've good. Never it's, heard of that. it's a thriller written by oh, Tom Clancy. I've read the book as well. The book oh. is even better than the movie. Oh, it's really cool. Yeah, yeah, I've really never good. heard of that. No, oh. me and Josh, me and Josh are watching a lot on Disney Plus. So we watched a film called um, Ron's Gone Wrong, which was about right. this little robot, and then he went a bit mental when he started punching people. <laughs> but it's a really good film. It's a really good film. Um, but it's not. It's not an old classic. It's like a. Right. It's like a kids film. But anyway, yeah, very um, good. brilliant. So that's we're coming to the end of our pre-service chatter. We're now going to go into VT, and then we'll we'll begin um, our service. Thank you.
Good morning, welcome to Riverside Church. Thank you for being with us. And um, if you haven't already just joined us, my name's Chloe. And I'm Chris. And this welcome is Chris's this first time in the studio, so give him lots of love. <laughs> <laughs> um, so Chris, what's happening this morning? Do you want to go through? Right, this morning we've got, we've got a great time of worship coming up. Um, some great songs to sing and worship for worship our Lord and yeah, Saviour. We've also got Josh Richardson preaching mm -hmm. this morning. Yeah. If you haven't heard him before, Josh is a brilliant communicator. So, you know, really pay attention. Something worth yeah. looking out for. It really is. Get your Bibles ready for yeah. later on. It's going to be really good. We've got Riverside news coming on yeah. as well. So yeah. Lots of Riverside Great. news this morning. Yeah, yeah brilliant. Um, and we also just want to encourage you to share the live stream. It's a great way to share um, your faith and what you believe in with your friends and family and people who might not know Jesus. So um, please share the live stream. Um, another exciting thing that we have, which you'll see in a second, is we've now got a new camera in Whoa. the um, main auditorium. So instead of looking like this, you'll get to look at a little bit of an angle. So that's something to look out for because that's quite exciting and yeah. um, we're getting ready for it. So Chris, why don't you just um, read a little passage to us? before we begin. Is that yeah, okay? okay, yeah. So this is Psalm 107, uh, just the first verse, and it says, mm. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, mm. for his mercy endures forever. Yeah, Such a, a great comfort to know mm. that God's mercy endures forever. He is yeah. good. There, there is no, nothing bad in him. There's no malice. There's yeah. no... Nothing like that. He is good yeah. all the time. Yeah, and he is worthy of our praise. Yeah, isn't fantastic. It? We're going to go into a song called Waymaker, um, which really focuses on the words of who God is and who Jesus is. And what we'd like to do just before we um, get into that song and we go across to um, the worship team is just to spend a moment just waiting upon the Holy Spirit. Um, so why don't you at home maybe just get into a comfortable position? Maybe you just want to stand up. Maybe you want to put your hands out in front of you. And we're just going to really, you know, in that verse it says his faithful love endures forever. Let's just wait upon the Lord and wait upon his love. So I'm just going to pray and then we'll go into a time of worship. So God, we thank you that you are God with us. We thank you that your faithful love endures forever. And we just ask right now, Holy Spirit that you fill the places um, and the homes of the people watching online, whether they're in their living room, their bedroom or out and about, Father. Yes. Your Holy Spirit, just be with us this morning as we worship you, Father, yes. yeah. as we worship you. Yeah. Thank you. We're just going to go into a time of worship now. Mm -hmm.
darkness, my God, that is who you are. Sing out his name. You are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you
you know, I remember. Do you know what? We're going to just pray. We're going to commit uh, our time to the Lord. So, Father, we thank you that uh, you are always with us. Mm. Father, we thank you that you are good. Mm. Your mercies never fail. Yeah. Your love endures forever. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Lord, that you are incredibly amazing. And we just lift our praise to you. Yeah. And, Lord, as we determine in our hearts to put you front and center mm. right now, as we turn in our hearts to make you the, the prime focus yeah. now and always mm. to make you truly Lord of our lives, Lord, we, we just give you the honor and glory that is due, due your name. We praise you, we worship you, we thank you. And Lord, as we, as we explore more about you this morning, I pray that you'd enlighten our hearts. I pray that by your spirit, you'd move in us, uh, move in everyone who's, uh, everyone who's watching, everyone who's partaking this morning. Lord, we just give you the glory and thank you for your incredible love in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Brilliant. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. And thank you to the band. That was incredible, wasn't it? It's lovely yeah. just to see, we're just talking about it, like a really stripped back band, um, but actually all really incredible musicians and Magda's an amazing singer, isn't yeah, she? So yeah, it's yeah, lovely. Great. Um, so this morning, um, Josh is going to be sharing us a with us a little bit later, um, and we are continuing with our Jesus series, and Josh this morning is going to be talking about walking with Jesus. So what I thought we'd do, um, just in this point of the morning, is just to talk, just to ask, ask you a wee question, Chris. <laughs> Can you tell us about a time in your life where you, you have felt close and you've felt like Jesus has been walking with you? Well, I, I think, you know, it, the, the Jesus... If we open ourselves mm. to him, if we if we are attentive to him, yeah. we can feel his presence with us, can't yeah, we? Yeah. Through, through thick and thin, yeah. through good and bad. Yeah. Um, but I think uh, one particular example when I really felt uh, God close to me, Jesus close to me, was when um, Francesca was born. Mm. And mm -hmm. uh, you, you know, she's, she's a delight, <laughs> yeah. she's wonderful. But um, there were many things spoken of her, her by the medical professionals. Mm. Um, and you know, with, with the greatest uh, medical um, expertise yeah. um, but the prognosis was not good the prognosis mm. was that she would be pretty much uncommunicative yeah. all of her life she wouldn't be able to walk mm. she wouldn't be able to care for herself and you know bit by bit God has yeah. touched her he's healing her yeah. he is restoring yeah. her yeah. and you know to considering what she can do now is yeah. it's great yeah. and what she's able to yeah. do in the past Aww. and God is so great yeah. and, and he's been with us throughout the journey. Yeah, that's right. amazing. And that continues to be a journey, yeah. doesn't it? But it actually, does. Francesca's amazing. And I know we've talked about it before, her love for church and her love for worship and yeah. stuff like that just shines out of her, doesn't that's it? Right, so yeah, it's incredible it's, to see how God's not just worked in your life, but actually he's working in her as well, which yes. is incredible. Yeah, yeah, brilliant. Well, thank you, Chris. That's brilliant. We're now going to go and watch Riverside News to find out what is going on in the life of the church. Hi, my name is Caitlin. And I'm Magda. And, and this, this is Riverside, Riverside News. A big welcome to you guys here to Riverside Church. If this is your first time joining us, make sure that you contact one of our stewards. We're very happy to have you here. We're so excited that the direct support group starts this Saturday from 2 to 4 p.m. And we've got people signed up already. So we'd love if you can keep sharing the posts and just keep advertising so that more people can come. On the 27th of January at quarter past two, there will be Cafe Heroes again, finally. Um, you're going to do some crafting, it will be amazing, so feel free to join. Riverside Academy is back on the 27th of January at 7.30pm. We're going to be studying Revelation and you can either join on Zoom or in person in the building and we'd love to see you there. Last week's Messy Church was amazing and that is why the next Messy Church is already booked in for the 26th of February, so get it in your diaries. On the 30th of January at 2pm, we're going to have the Wellbeing Walk. It's going to be at Woodbury Common. And make sure, um, it's important to say that, make sure that you bring a hot flask of soup with you for afterwards. I'm excited to see you there, guys. The cafe is still open Monday to Friday, 10 till 2. So you can come along after you've had a cold walk like us. Sadly, this is the end of our cold walk and therefore also of Riverside News. But as always, I think we have a joke for you. What do pirates call Noah's boat? The ER. <laughs> well, bye guys. <laughs>
expedition leader. He's an ex-Royal Marine, and so he's going to take us for all the... Tu- he's not, by the way, so uh, it's okay. Uh, so families, everybody can come, and it's really good to do that. So if you want to come, that's going to be after church on the Sunday, the 30th. We all need to lose a few pounds post-Christmas and also look after our own well-being, and that's a well-being walk so we can have a chatter and some soup at the end. Uh, whatever the weather is, we're doing this, guys, all right? You know, even if it's raining, we're doing this, guys. Yes? Don't want no flaky stuff going on, isn't it? Let's not be flaky about well-being, isn't it? You feel better when you've been soaked, don't you know? Have you noticed that? You get home, you dry off, and you feel you've done something worthwhile. I'm not convincing now. I've lost you all. (laughs) Great. Anyway, so we're going to do something really special here right now because transitions and what we do always works with people volunteering in one role, changing to new roles and taking time out to take some well-deserved rest in for what they've done. So I'm going to try and organize this in a, in a controlled way as much as possible. So Leslie, could you come and join me because you love public accolade, I know. Claire, could you come and stand here if that's all right. Rachel, who is on the, the tech AV today, isn't it? <laughs> You, you know how short on rotor we got when Rachel was behind the desk, isn't it? Come and, if you just stand, if that's about here, can I position you two here? And then Liz as well, come and join me as well, just so I can explain it. Isabel, are you here with us? Are you busy downstairs? I think you are. But okay, we'll do that. So, just to let you know briefly to explain out here. Claire has been volunteering in the church for many, many years, doing many, many things, but over the last particular season has been given the headache of trying to just coordinate and pastor um, and do all the worship, which is no mean feat, by the way, and not because the worship team are terrible people or anything like that, <clears throat> but they're really emotional. You know, I'm joking, <laughs> but thank you, uh, Claire, for that. And Leslie, uh, you've been looking after our children's work downstairs on a Sunday, uh, and we just wanted to honour and thank you for doing that. Can we give them a round of applause, and can we just present... <laughs> That's some flowers, isn't it? We've even got a photographer to come in specially today uh, to do this moment as well. And you can also do a clap online as well. Leslie, is that right? Yes, you can do that. That's right. Don't that would be really bad, isn't it? You didn't get flowers. And you're going to have to keep up with this next bit, isn't it? So Leslie has been spoken to the children's team, and Isabel is kindly offered to take on the work on a Sunday morning to look after our children. She's got a real vision to develop prayer in particular into that, and she's doing that right now. So can you make sure you encourage her uh, and just acknowledge and thank her for doing that? So Leslie's going to still um, lead out on Messy Church, so Leslie's not disappearing anywhere, and obviously she's our incredible land administrator, so you're not going anywhere. Jesus told me. No, he didn't. <laughs> uh, but Claire has just asked, and Rachel's taken over from um, managing worship, so good luck, guys, with that, isn't that, you know, that's fantastic. So any queries about worship, so Rachel's going to do that in the next Nixon. We have got posts advertised for both children and worship, but we're recovering in the meantime. So Rachel, you are in the meantime. Thank you for doing that, and that's fantastic. And then Rachel said, could I just change some of what she does in relation to connect groups? So if you're a connect group leader, Rachel's going to ask Liz to kind of step in and and so if you're a connect group leader, someone will be talking to you and we've got some really cool dates and things to do to feed into that. So thank you very much for that. But Rachel, we want to thank you for doing all the work in connect groups. Could you get some flowers too? <clears throat> Do we understand all that? Have you got that? If that I tried to do that as simple as possible. Can I pray for you guys as a thank you? Did, Oh, ladies, we would not be a church without ladies. I can tell you that for nothing like this, isn't it? So I, I have got no time for, for misogyny in the male denomination at all because I know exactly what women do in this church and, and in the whole of community, by the way. So um, I'm very impatient. If you talk to me about male-only leadership, I'm impatient. I need to tell you that as well because we value, you know, we're just blind, and I think it's a really great place to be. That's why they're... Yeah, that's... that's... <laughs> We know, we know that it's good, right? Can you just put your hands towards? We're going to pray a blessing of thanks and a blessing of commissioning 
into this role. So God, we do honor, Lord, both uh, Leslie uh, and Claire and Rachel for all that they've done in these roles in this season, Lord God. And we thank you for the reward that you've both got stored up in heaven and you've deposited in them and the character for which they've grown. We pray that they would just be able to reflect on the seeds of what they've done over the years to come and how things grow because of their, what they've done. Lord, we pray into the, looking forward into new people taking on new roles. And we just pray for, for Rachel and for Isabel and for Liz. Lord God, give them insight. Give them prophetic direction. Give them motivation. Give them team. Give them resources. Give them everything they need. To advance your church. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm going to invite you to stand. We're going to sing our next song and we're going to give to God uh, financially and with our praise and our worship. And if you do want to get involved in any of those teams, we would gladly welcome you to that, you know. So we don't want to see Rachel at the back hiding there on AV. If you feel that you can help out in AV, that's good. If you feel that you can help out in the worship team, that is good. In the children, in the youth, in the pastoral, in the connection, in the welcome on the stewards as people come in. We just want to be a family that serves one another. That's how we do church as well. So let's stand, let's worship, and let's give to God. Thank you.
So Father God, we're reminded where you said those words, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. And so God, as we prepare our hearts to listen to your word, that we would hear you speak into our lives, that we might go out of this place, walking with you every day. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you if you'd like to take your seats and your Bibles, if that's right. I'm just going to do the reading for today, which is taken from Luke's Gospel, chapter 24, and I'm going to read from verse 13. That same day, two of Jesus' followers were walking to the village of Emmaus, seven miles from Jerusalem. And as they walked, they were talking about everything that had happened. And as they talked and discussed these things, Jesus himself suddenly came and began walking with them. But God kept them from recognizing Jesus. He asked them, what are you discussing so intently as you walk along? And they stopped short. Sadness written across their faces, and then one of them, Cleopas, replied, You must be the only person in Jerusalem who hasn't heard of all the things that have happened over the last few days. What things? Jesus asked. The things that happened to Jesus, the man from Nazareth, they said. He was a prophet who did powerful miracles, and he was a mighty teacher in the eyes of God and all the people, but our leading priests and other religious leaders handed him over to be condemned to death. They crucified him. We hoped he was the Messiah who had come to rescue Israel. And this happened three days ago. And then Jesus took them through, verse 27, through the writings of Moses and all the prophets, explaining from all the scriptures the things concerning himself. And by this time, they were near Emmaus and the end of the journey. Jesus acted as if we were going, but they said, stay the night. Since it's getting late, so he went home with them. They sat down to eat. He took the bread. He blessed it. He broke it. He gave it to them. And suddenly their eyes were opened and they recognized him. And at that moment he disappeared. They said to each other, didn't our hearts burn with us as he talked to us on the road and explained the scriptures to us? And within the hour... They're on their way back to Jerusalem. They found the 11 disciples and the others who had gathered with them who said, the Lord has really risen. He has appeared to Peter. Good morning, everybody. How are we this morning? Are we good? Good. Um, I love the Bible. Who loves the Bible here? Put your hand up if you love the Bible. It's, it's, it's just so amazing. I love that story that we read, and I'm going to come back there in a second. But what I love about the Bible is it's all about Jesus. It's all about Jesus. Every single part of it, the Old Testament, is the build-up to Jesus. The Gospels is the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus. The letters to the church is all about what that life, death, and resurrection means for us as the church of Jesus Christ. Revelation is the revelation that Jesus is going to come back again one day. Jesus is central to it all. Jesus is mentioned 1,158 times in the New Testament. That's a lot, isn't it? That is a lot. I think the next best is like Peter, who's got 150. He's not even close. Martin Luther said this, Scripture is the manger in which Christ lives. Isn't that a nice picture? Scripture is the manger in which Christ lives. And we've started a new preaching series here at Riverside um, this year, really focusing on that one thing, Jesus the most central thing to our faith. And last week, Pastor Aaron came and shared from the book of Hebrews, chapter 12, verse 2, talking about how we've got to focus our attention on Jesus. We've got to focus our eyes on Jesus. Who was here last week? Keep your hands up if you enjoyed the message. All couple of people put their hands up. Um, got you. You know, but how we, how we need to keep our eyes on Jesus, our champion who perfects and initiates our faith. He also talked about some of the things that can distract us, that can take our attention off of looking at Jesus. And today I've been given that task of unpacking what it looks like for us to walk with Jesus. Now, who here, I love to be interactive, so I'll get you putting your hands up and down. All the time. Who likes a walk here? Who likes to go for a walk? Put your hand up if you like. Oh, quite a few people. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of going for walks, to be honest with you. I, I, I'm not, not a huge walker, but what I've, what, I've been on enough walks to learn some valuable lessons. 
But there's different types of walkers in life, isn't there? You've got the fast and the slow walkers. You know those people, the slow walkers, those, you wouldn't even call them slow walkers, they almost saunter, don't they? Sort of like as they walk along, there's no, there's no rush at all to them. And then you've got the people who are like, vroom, and they've gone to their next destination. Have you ever sort of walked with somebody who walks so fast that they can't talk at the same time? See, when me and Chloe were doing long, di- long distance dating, and I, and I was in Exeter and she was in Glasgow, we'd both finish work at a similar time and we'd be coming home from work, so we'd ring each other. And Chloe, on our journey, would get the train for a bit, and then she'd have to walk. And I could tell as soon as she started walking, because she doesn't have the ability to talk, walk, and breathe at the same time. And I have to say that out of the three of those things, the one that fell out most often was the breathing. Because she, she, would, it would, she was too busy in the talking, and she would be, I was like, you just have to take a second to breathe, Chloe, and then you can keep on going with your story. But we've got fast and slow walkers. We've also got the professionals and the amateurs. Have you ever turned up in a car park to go for a walk with somebody, and they get a rucksack, and they start taking you through what they've packed in their rucksack? They're professionals. They bring along um, an item for every single eventuality. Ration packs for a week. A compass a knife in case it turns ugly and you think like we're going for a walk on Exmouth Beach like like, like, just in case it turns up well too fair it's probably fair actually Uh, a water filtration system a bird watching book and a flare and then you've got the amateurs like me who turn up you know with a coat a Mars bar and a packet of knickknacks the crisps um, in my pocket and we're good to go you know the amateurs and professionals you've got the journey and the destination walkers You've got those who, who like to go for a walk just for the journey. I'm here for the journey, man. Like, it's all about sort of like the journey. It's not about, not about a destination when we go for a walk. It's just about enjoying the walk. That's not me. That isn't me. I, I wanna, if I go for a walk, I want to know a couple of things. I want to know where we're going, how long it takes, and the most important one is what food will be available at the destination we get there. Anybody know Yeah, a couple of our men to that bit? We all know, people, I saw a couple of people look at each other and go, yeah, that's you. Um, we all know that. And we know that Jesus walked a lot. He walks a lot from place to place. And I don't know what sort of walker Jesus was, but we know that he walks a lot. 1 John 2, 3 to 6 says this, And by this we know that we have come to know him if we keep his commandments. Whoever says, I know him, but does not keep his commandments is a liar, and the truth is not in him. But whoever keeps his word in him, truly the love of God is perfected. By this we may know that we are in him. Whoever says he abides in him ought to walk in the same way that he, which he walked. Whoever says he abides in him ought to walk in the same way in which he walked. The Passion Translation says, whoever lives in Jesus will walk in his footsteps. If we're followers of Jesus, we want to know, we, want to th- we need to think about what it looks like for us to walk in the footsteps of Jesus. What it looks like for us to walk with Jesus, to walk the places that Jesus walked. Well, where did Jesus walk? Well, here's a bit of a list. He walked up and down mountains. He walked on beaches. He walked through the wilderness. He walked through villages, towns and cities. He walked into homes, into the temple, into synagogues. He walked to isolated places. He walked through huge crowds. He walked to places to pray. He walked to places to preach. He walked on water. He walked to Golgotha with the cross. And three days later, he walked out of the grave victorious, didn't he? And I want to pick up a couple of those that if we want to walk with Jesus, if we want to have a relationship with Jesus, what does it look like for us to walk in his footsteps? Number one, if you've got your notebook, Walking with Jesus means we need to pray. So often in the Gospels, you see Jesus Jesus withdrew himself and prayed. Jesus took himself to an isolated location and prayed. If we want to follow in the footsteps of Jesus, we need to pray. If Jesus, God made flesh, the very living word of God, had to pray, you better believe that we need to pray too. It's so important that we pray. Jesus, when he teaches about prayer, he says, look, don't just stand up on a pedestal and shout loud prayers. He says, when you pray, take yourself away. Remove the distractions, basically. Close the door. You know, if we want to walk like Jesus, sometimes we have to walk away from the things that stop us praying, and we have to walk into the places where we can pray. And a lot of times that that looks like isolation. We're never alone because Jesus is with us. 
Number two, walking with Jesus means we need to preach. Matthew 9, 35 says that Jesus was going through all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogue and proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom. Mark 1, 14. Jesus came into Galilee preaching the gospel of God. Mark 1, 35. Jesus talking to Peter, let us go somewhere else to the towns nearby so that I may preach there also. You know, we want to be a people that preach. If we want to follow Jesus, we're going to be people that preach. Jesus at the Great Commission says, go everywhere, tell everyone about me. Sometimes we think about preaching that it's only the people who have a platform that are the preachers. That's so wrong. And in fact, if you wait for a platform to start preaching, you've missed the whole point completely. Because we are called to preach. We are each called to preach to be preachers. How we live our lives in our workplaces, in our schools, in our colleges. How we talk, how we communicate, how, how, we, how, how, we, how we meet with people for coffee. Every single part of it should preach the gospel of the good news of Jesus Christ. And that's what walking with Jesus looks like. Number three, walking with Jesus means expecting to see and walk in the miraculous. Jesus' ministry packed full of the miraculous packed full of the supernatural and if we want to walk in Jesus' footsteps we've got to be willing willing and expecting to see the miraculous happen Jesus walked on water I love a couple of times Peter walked on water it required huge faith I think for Peter to get out of that boat and walk on that water didn't it can you imagine the the thing but it, the Bible says that we walk by faith, not by sight. And you can't walk on water without being willing to get your feet wet. We've got to have a willingness to take that step of faith. The miraculous was only one step away from Peter. Everybody in that boat was one step away from the miraculous. Only Peter took the step. Who believes that when we walk with Jesus, we are only ever one step away from the miraculous? You know, we've been journeying that as a church the last couple of weeks. We know sort of Chris, Dave's son, has not been well. And we have been praying for him as a church. And who was grateful to hear, if you haven't heard, that he had a bit of a turnaround this week and was doing much better than he was last week. That's fair to say, isn't it? We are one step away from the miraculous. And if we want to walk with Jesus, we've got to have the faith to believe that we are just the one step away. And then we've got to live in it. We've got to step out into it and trust that Jesus will come through with us because he, he always does. Number four, walking with Jesus means taking up our cross. Jesus preaching to a crowd in Luke 9, 23. He says, if any, any of you want to be my follower, you must turn from your selfish ways, take up your cross daily and follow me. Following in Jesus' footsteps means sometimes we have to leave things behind we've got to stop doing things we have to stop saying some things um, thinking some things doing certain things Romans 8 says through the power of the Holy Spirit that we can put to death our sinful nature taking up the cross means laying ourselves down you know when Jesus comes to the um, to the crippled man and he says and he heals him and he says take your your mat and walk what he's saying is he's saying leave behind the previous things leave behind what you was and step into what you are now called to be and that is what we do when we take up our cross and walk we say it's not just about me living to my will my ways or my wants anymore but Jesus I choose to walk into your will for my life your way for my life and your desires and your wants for my life too. You know, we see Jesus in the garden of Gethsemane and he's, 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 hurting, he's about to go through the crucifixion and he's saying, God, if there's any way to take this from me, this cup of suffering, please, but not my will be done but yours. And that's a prayer we have to pray every single day if we want to walk with Jesus not my will today, but yours, Lord. Not how, I don't want to be comfortable today, Lord. I want to do your will today, Lord. Every single day. Number five, walking with Jesus means walking out of the grave. On the third day, Jesus walked out of that tomb. And in doing that, 
got rid of the power of death, the, the, the sting of death, the power of sin. It's all finished because of what Jesus did when he walked out of that tomb. He made a way that you could too. I could too. Isn't that cool? That we can walk out of the tomb, that this physical death, when we die here, it's not the end. And so walking with Jesus means walking eternally. It means walking in victory. It means walking out of the dead things and into the things of eternal life, eternal walking, eternal relationship with Jesus. So that's where Jesus walked. But who did he walk with and how? Well, he walked with all kinds of different people. He, took, he walked with fishermen, tax collectors, businesswomen, outcasts. Jesus walked with whoever was willing to walk in the same direction that he was headed. And we see the disciples, the people who walk the closest to Jesus in the Gospels, are not there because they are qualified by some special qualification. They are there. Why? Well, because they responded to the call when Jesus said, come, follow me. And they said, yeah, I think we will. We will follow you, Jesus. And you know what's amazing is the how of how when we walk with Jesus, it's just not just a Simon Says sort of relationship where Jesus walks in point one and we walk in point two, but Jesus comes alongside us too. Isn't that cool? He doesn't just, he leads us, yes, but he comes alongside us. And that's what we see in this passage in Luke 24 that Pastor Aaron read. Just after the resurrection, these two disciples walking on this road to this place called Emmaus completely confused and befuddled by the events of the last couple of days. They don't know what's going on. They, they've just, the man they've been walking through with for the last couple of years, they've been journeying with the man they put their faith in. They've just watched be crucified. And then there's, there's reports of, of, of women going to the tomb that morning and, 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 and Jesus isn't there, the body's gone. And an angel was turned up and spoke to them and said that Jesus is alive. And it's into that confusion and it's into that turmoil that it says in verse 15 that Jesus himself suddenly came and began walking with them. Who knows that Jesus turns up into our confusion and our turmoil and he walks alongside us. He begins to converse with them. He begins to ask them questions. He begins to ask them what they're going through. And they tell him, who knows that Jesus wants to know what you're going through. He wants to be alongside you as you talk about the difficult things. Oh, Lord, I'm struggling with this, God. He wants to know what you are going through. They talk to him. They begin to unpack the things that's been going on over the last couple of days. They say, oh, you know, this Jesus guy, he died because they don't recognize him at this point. Jesus then, himself in the disguised condition, began, begins to unpack and explain the scriptures about why he had to go through what he went through. And they still don't understand him. And these are disciples who have had a, had a revelation of Jesus. These are people that pre-crucifixion had walked with Jesus daily. But in this moment, when Jesus is walking with them, they didn't recognize him why because he'd revealed himself differently do you want to come up on the keys magda who ever felt in life that they're riding solo maybe you've had a revelation of jesus before in your life but actually you know that oh, i just feel alone a lot of times i just don't see Jesus' presence with me i feel like i'm lonely the last very last words in the book of matthew um, the chapter 28 jesus is talking to his disciples he says You can be sure of this. I am with you always, even to the end of the age. That is a promise. That is a guarantee. That is the living and active word of God, the Logos. That is a a promise that will never be rescinded. That is truth. And maybe you're here today and you feel lonely. And you need to know that God, that Jesus is with you this morning. He was with you yesterday when it was hard. He's with you today when it's easier or not so easy or harder. And he'll be with you tomorrow, whatever the circumstances then too. You will never walk alone. I don't know about you, but one thing that I do at the start of every year is I I pray, God, will you give me a word for this year? Will you give me a word that I can focus on, that you want me to focus on this year? And the word that came to me this year is that word gratitude. I have a tendency in life to be a glass half empty person just naturally. On the scale of optimist versus pessimist, I would lean towards a slight pessimist. You know, you can spot a pessimist in denial because they'll call themselves a realist. But let me tell you this, 
that, that, that an optimist is a realist too. They're just living in a different reality to the pessimist. And I want to make a decision. That word gratitude for me this year means living in a different reality. It means living in a reality that Jesus is with me. It means living in the reality that I am blessed by the blesser. It means that whatever I go through, Jesus is with me. And that's the reality that I want to live. You know what I've learned in the first couple of weeks of being trying to be grateful every single day? I am recognizing more the presence and the power of Jesus with me now than I did before. The only thing that's changed is that I've chosen to recognize Jesus in the things I hadn't chosen to recognize him in before. You know, the, the, the disciples on the road to Emmaus, they say, Jesus, what, well, or the man who they don't recognize, why don't you come in and spend the evening with us? And it says this in verse 30. As they sat down to eat, he took the bread and he blessed it. Then he broke it and gave it to them. Suddenly, their eyes were opened and they recognized him. It's not until the disciples sit with Jesus and they see him do something they recognize he's done before that they recognize who he is. Let us not wait in 2022 to see Jesus do something that he did before in our lives again before we take, recognize what he's doing. He wants to do a new thing. He's always with us. Sometimes we're just not recognizing him. We're not looking for him. We're not fixating our eyes on him. Oh, like two, three years ago, Josh, I used to come to church every week and I'd get the goosebumps. And the goosebumps would tell me that the presence of God was here. And that's great for three years ago. Maybe you're coming now and you're not getting the goosebumps anymore. But maybe Jesus is saying, I want to communicate with you a new, new way. You know, you might have been sort of sat by the letterbox. I've been waiting for a letter to come from Jesus for years. And he said, I sent you a text yesterday. And we need to be willing to know that Jesus, how he reveals himself can be different at different times. And how he revealed himself in 2021 how he journeyed with you in 2021 may not be the same as how he wants to do it in 22. And that's okay. Let's be ready for what he's doing today. Now, verse 32, they say, didn't our hearts burn within us as he talked with us on the road and he explained the scriptures to us? You know what? When they recognized that Jesus had just been with them in that moment, they recognized that Jesus had been with them the whole journey. Well, some of you this morning, some of us this morning, need to, when we have a revelation that Jesus is with us now, what he's going to do is he's going to remind us that he's always been with you. That he was with you when you thought, at the worst point you thought, Jesus would never be with me in that moment. He's going to reveal himself saying, if, I was, if I'm with you today, I was with you then. And I want to be with you the rest of this year, every single day. Maybe at the start of 22 in your walk with Jesus, you're already feeling weary. We read in 28, verse 28, that the destination for the disciples was Emmaus. They got there. And then just a couple of verses later in 33, they've had a revelation of Jesus and they're back on the road again. Sometimes when we have that fresh revelation of Jesus, the energy that was almost like, well, I was going this direction and that was it. He gives us fresh energy and we're up again. We're not bedding down for the night anymore. We're off again. We're on to the next thing that God's calling us into. And you may think, oh, well, Jesus, you know, you gave me a call in 2021. You know, I still want to pursue that and you can still pursue that. But he might also be saying, yes, but I want to see you pursue this in 2022 too. Oh, or the journey that you think, how often do you think, these guys thought that Emmaus was the destination. Emmaus was just the point where they encountered Jesus again. And we just need to have those points where we encounter Jesus again. Why don't we all just stand up for a second? At the start of this 2022, let's just pray. Jesus, we may have had, I may have had a revelation yesterday, but Lord, I want you to reveal yourself again to me today that you are with me. Every eye closed for a second. Maybe you, you've never responded to the call that Jesus makes to disciples to come and follow me. Come and walk with me. Come and journey with me. And you want to make a decision today to say, to say I, want to, I want to walk with Jesus, Josh. I don't know exactly what it means but there's something about what you've said it's just resonating with me right now inside and I want to make a decision to walk with Jesus maybe I've walked with Jesus before and I feel like actually 
I'm hearing you say, come follow me again, and I need to follow you again. I've gone off in my own direction. If that's you, we're going to pray a really simple prayer. And all I want you to do is to make that your prayer, is to say amen at the end. Dear Lord Jesus, I choose to respond to your call to come and follow you today by saying yes. I say yes to following you now. I'm sorry for where I've not followed you where my thoughts, where my actions, where my words have not been in line with you, Jesus. But I want to walk with you. I want to walk alongside you. I want to be led by you. I would not live according to my will, my wants, or my ways, but instead your will, your wants, and your ways for my life. Change me from the inside out. No, I want to talk about the power. Brilliant. What a fantastic preach and just a fantastic time really to reflect on what it, what it looks like for us to walk with Jesus. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Step by step, yeah. day by day, minute by minute, hour yeah. by hour. What does it mean yeah. to, to walk with him, yeah. to walk hand in hand with him? Yeah. Never walk alone again. No, exactly. That's amazing, so, isn't yeah, brilliant. It? Yeah. And we just want to highlight, if you prayed that prayer with Josh at the end, maybe for the first time kind of giving your life to Jesus or maybe... Maybe you've prayed it a few times and actually you just want to get in touch. You just want to get connected with us at Riverside. We would love it if you emailed us or private messaged us on Facebook. We would love you to give you some resources. And if 
if you live far away, we'd be more than happy to kind of get in touch. You can come into the center if you felt comfortable. Um, so you can either private message on Facebook or the email Email is info at loveexeter.com um, and we would love to just get connected and get yeah. in touch. Yeah, brilliant. we would. It'd be yeah, great. Brilliant. Well, thank yeah. you so much for joining us this morning. It's been a fantastic morning. It has been it, great morning. I really enjoyed it. Thank you very much, Chloe. Yeah, That's it's right. been brilliant. Um, yeah. And we'll hope to see you next week. Thank you yeah. very much. Thank Have a nice you. week. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.